A Savior is born, and his name is Christ the Lord. In him is life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. But listen, he came to his own, and his own rejected him. But, and this promise remains true this morning, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name. And I'm glad I'm one of them who believe on his name, and I've been made a child of the living God. Welcome to the Voice of Triumph with Roger R. Woodard, Senior Pastor of Family Worship Center located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Pastor Woodard's ministry is reaching a hurting world with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Now, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, here is Pastor Roger R. Woodard. We are created in His image to live forever. But if Christ did not come, we would be like the secular world wants us to believe like a dead possum laying on the side of the highway. There'd be no consequence to our death because we'd be no more than an animal life, a porpoise, a wolf, or whatever animal life. Just be one of many. We're just more of an evolved species. I love Frank Turk's book and the name of his TV program. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. When you begin to consider the complexity of who we are and what we are, the, you've really got to have a lot of faith to believe it all happened by chance and happenstance. But if they want to claim that, I don't have a problem with it. And if they want to believe they evolved from apes, some of them I could believe it maybe, but, but if they want to claim that as their ancestry, that's fine. I made out of better stuff. I believe with all of my heart that God scooped up some mud and formed a man and breathed into him the breath of life. And he lived a little while with that guy and said, I can do better than that. And he took his rib and made a woman. And the highest point of his creation was not man, but it was the woman. Amen. And we know that because God came in the flesh. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world didn't know him. But as many as believed him and received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Let me read quickly from Psalm 124. I did mark it, actually. Yeah. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the wa proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, or blessed be the Lord, either way you wish to read it, who has not given us as a prey unto their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Israel said, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, we would have been swallowed up quick. But the thing is, it was the Lord, you see, so we were not swallowed up quick. If Christ had not come, you and I would have no hope. If Christ had not come, there'd be no healing of our body. If Christ had not come, there'd be no soulless for our sin-sick soul. If Christ had not come, there would be no comfort, a cold, dark, and hopeless world. But Christ did come, and because of that, we have hope. We have victory. We have healing. We have forgiveness. He did come. 
And even the secular world is celebrating his birth. Whether they want to or not, it's fantastic. But let me finish reading. Going on into the next song. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abides forever. If you trust in the Lord, you won't be removed because he came. They that trust in the Lord shall be as the mountains about Jerusalem. Because he says, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. The writer said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables, the ideas of men, fairy tales, and different things, and the myths that go with a secular society. But we know our Redeemer lives. We know that he watches over us. I, I uh, tell it a couple of the brethren before we came in here, Christmas time is not always a joyous, a joyous time for some people. Some are mourning the death of a loved one. I, I remember and I was telling them when Margaret and I first got married, we were so poor we couldn't pay attention. And uh, we had nothing. And we were staying at my mother's and dad's house. And so for Christmas, we made some plaster cats ugly things, but they were all we had to give us gifts. And so we painted them black. They had green eyes. I don't know whatever happened to them. We've moved so many times, probably in pieces all over the nation. But that was our Christmas. So poor we couldn't pay attention. I mean, it was awful. The next year, I believe it was the next year, it might have been two years later, I had gone in a credit, uh, a credit place to try to borrow $150 for Christmas, and Margaret was sitting out in the car praying that we could get it for Christmas. Rough times, true. And when I got the 150, it was a joyous thing. Some people, as I said, deal with death, sickness. Some people have too much month at the end of their money like we did, and they're coming into Christmas time with not much to be happy about, but they had each other, and we had each other, and we were happy in that and able to be with our parents uh, for the holidays, hers and mine, and we were happy about that and thanking God for his marvelous gifts. And as we began to be faithful unto the Lord, and stay in what God called us to be, God prospered us and blessed us as he has promised to do every person that will be faithful unto him. So there may be circumstances today that you find yourself not as happy as it has been or not as happy as you'd like to be. But here's the biggie. Because he came, you can rest assured that your sins are forgiven. You can rest assured that his eyes are... And listen, you can't have a better gift than that. The scripture says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable in the King James, but the translation would be his indescribable gift to us. That's God's greatest gift. For God so loved, he gave. And he didn't just give, he keeps on giving. Day in and day out, he keeps on giving because Jesus the old song says, and man shall live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Hark there, old angels sing. That's what we celebrate today. And though everything in life may not be great today, you may have plenty to be concerned about today, but you don't have to go home worrying about your future. You don't have to go home worrying about what's going to happen if some evil befalls you. I can't promise you that it will not. I can just promise you this. Whatever's in your future, God's already there. Whatever's in your future, good or bad, your victory is in Jesus because he came. Thank God. And you've heard me tell of Ken Graves, and if you've never heard Ken Graves, then I really can't describe, but he's an old former kickboxing 
champion, and I've, I've talked to him about coming and being with us. And he talks like that. Talks just like somebody kicked him in the throat one too many times. Pastor's way up in, in Maine. And I was listening to him speak, and he said, I want you to imagine down in the south that you're walking along the road and there's a dead carcass of a possum. And he said, I don't know what it is about men, but they can't resist the urge to go over and kick it. And you go over and you kick the carcass of a dead possum. And then you look down there and you realize there's life. Maggots are just working alive in that possum carcass. He said, as you look at it fascinatingly, it would never occur to you to get down there amongst those maggots. It's not something you'd do. But he said, what Jesus did, look down from his throne to us maggots. And he came down and got right in the middle of us and started dealing with the stuff us maggots have to deal with. And he made a way for you and me. You say, well, I'm not a maggot. This body will go back to the dust and the maggots will eat this body. And Jesus could have looked down and said, my, they need to try to work this out. But he didn't. He didn't come to the throne. He didn't come to the palace. He didn't even come to the temple. He came as a baby boy, born to a young girl in the stable. With not the kind of fanfare that you would expect a king to receive, and that's one of the reasons Israel rejected him. He didn't fit their idea of what a king should look like. As he grew up, at a carpenter's shop. Before he started his outward ministry, people in the community got acquainted to this Jesus whose father was a carpenter. And that's how they got acquainted with him. So when he began his ministry, they despised it because he didn't fit their image of a Messiah. But he came. And I think, this is just Roger, one of the most difficult things he had to deal with, me, was being nailed to a cross and the very people he had come to save were cursing him, swearing at him, mocking him. So if you're really who you say you are, come off the cross. We'll believe you. And I would imagine it would have been difficult for me. When with one twitch of his finger, he could have called legions of angels. They would have rushed that mountain, taken him off, and condemned everybody there. But by doing that, condemn you and me also. And when I pray, one of the first things I do is thank him for the love of Calvary. I don't even begin to comprehend that love. That even make him want to do it, much less actually do it. But he did. And that night of great celebration, with a proclamation from the angels of the heavenly host, and the angels, now we know by the scripture that the wise men showed up later, And that great pronouncement that night, no one understood what the path ahead for that baby boy was that night. But it was going to take a joyous time, the birth of its son.
to live among us sinless and win back for us the dominion Adam so easily surrendered. And if Christ had not come, this would just be an exercise in futility in coming to church today or any day to singing the songs, to praying the prayers. Now, I know with so many people, it's just a formality. And the reality of what we're doing does not compute in them. The fact that we take time to celebrate his birth later on in the year, next year we'll celebrate his death. They're inextricably connected. For if he did not come, conceived of the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin, then he was not the acceptable sacrifice. If he did not live a sinless life and was was without blemish, he could not have been the acceptable sacrifice. But if he had not died on that cross and shed his blood, there would have been no redemption. But the cross would have been in vain had he not got up on the resurrection morning and the tomb empty. But that didn't finish the deal because he had to ascend back to the heavenly father where he told the disciples before he left, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare that place, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. But he said, I want you to go tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. And when the day of Pentecost fully came, down came the down payment on the entire thing. The down payment, the earnest money to guarantee he's coming again. And it was proof positive he had made it back to the Father. He said, because if I get to the Father, I'll send it. All of these things are intricately interwoven and without one piece of it he was not who he is and because of all these things because of Christmas day because of a sinless life because of his death burial and resurrection and because of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost you and I can face tomorrow and eternity that he's coming again I go and prepare the place I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also and so there's so much more wrapped up in Christmas than just a bouncing baby boy born in a barn in Bethlehem all of our hopes dreams faith is wrapped up in that initial night and it's intricately woven in a pattern for you and me to live our life in victory and in faith and in hope if Christ had not come there would be no joy to the world Christ did come and because he did There's good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And no matter how bleak your life may look today, remember this. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a Savior is given. Thank God we can say with Paul, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But we have hope in this present world and in the world to come, everlasting life. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to deliver this little word where the angels pronounced Unto us, you've given us a Savior who is Christ, the Lord. And at least this crowd, and maybe some watching in Europe and along the network, 
also have this knowledge who the Savior is. I know not everyone has heard the, the message. That's why we continue to put it out. That there is salvation in none other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And I thank you for the privilege of proclaiming that. And I pray that all along the network and in the house that this message has gone home. I don't know where you are this morning. It is still morning, I do believe. It's close. I don't know what you're dealing with. I've told this illustration before that we're going to pray, give you a chance to pray. I told you about a couple of our Christmases and our first pastorate. Uh, we're still teenagers. And I know we had a problem that I know you've never had. We were broke. Christmas coming. I thought of several ways of getting money, some illegal. I dismissed that. I didn't figure it's a good idea for a pastor to get in something illegal. My dad was pastoring in East Tennessee, and he didn't have any more money really than I did, but thought he might could borrow me some. So I called him. I heard that old man's voice. I was going to be strong. After all, I'm a man. I'm married. I ought to be able to take care of my own affairs. But when I heard his voice, I broke. And I began to sob. I mean, tears were flowing. My nose was snotting. Everything, I was just broke up. Mark said, you shouldn't tell it. It's the truth. I hadn't been able to say anything to my dad, but on the other end of that phone, he was sobbing too. I hadn't been able to tell him what was wrong. You see, what was going on there, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, that our Lord can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities and that was my father and he I'm hurting he's hurting he didn't know what about but he was feeling it and when I finally could get my words out I told him dad I ain't got no money I know every way of getting any money Christmas time is here he said son I don't have it three hundred dollars is what I was wanting he said but I'll go to the bank in the morning to Monday morning, I'll borrow it and I'll send it to you. I quit crying. I did. I just stopped. I dried it up. Started planning on how I was going to spend that money for Christmas. I didn't have one more penny in my pocket. But I talked to my dad. And he said, it's coming. I believed him. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The world doesn't understand this because they don't know Him. But, glory to God in the highest. Now we are the sons of God. And it doesn't appear what we're going to be. But we know when Christ shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And Jesus has promised, fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. No matter how bleak your life this morning, I urge you to call on your Heavenly Father who loves me a lot more than my earthly father did and He loved me. For He cares about you. He cares where you are. He cares what you're suffering. He cares that you're hurting. But if you will call on Him and touch Him and dare to believe, see, I, I didn't see it yet. I didn't have it in my pocket yet. But I talked to my Heavenly Father. 
He said, it's coming. I believed him. My heavenly father, my earthly father didn't lie to me. And my heavenly father won't lie to me. Now, Father, I, I know their pain in the lives of this congregation. I don't know them all, but I know some of them. I know some having turmoil in their family. I know some are in the hospital, loved ones in the hospital, desperate. Some are grieving because of death. Others lack enough funds to have the type of Christmas that they wish to have. Some are struggling with sin because they just haven't found the capacity to break old habits, cleanse themselves from those things. Some have been oppressed by the devil and some have even thought about killing themselves, thinking that the problem would be solved that way. And God, I pray that you'd help everybody realize that the devil's a liar. He's incapable of telling them the truth and taking such ra irrational actions. Su of course, suicide finishes the deal and hell will be quickly thereafter. Help us to see by eyes of faith that you really do care about us and you really do want nothing but the best for us, if we will dare to touch you and believe you, we'll find you there. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you need. And if I did, probably couldn't do anything about it. But I'm just going to ask you, whatever the load that you're carrying, I want you to come lay it at the altar today. And trust that God's going to act in your behalf. And I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to prolong the service. I'm just giving you an opportunity to pray. And if you don't know, you're not joining the church. You're not going to put your name on a mailing list. There are no ulterior motives here. Giving you a chance to come and talk to your Heavenly Father about your life and your need. No strings attached. Thank you for joining us today for Voice of Triumph. We invite you to check out our website at www.familyworship.org. There you will find information on our church service time, special events, purchase our books and music, and also information on becoming a partner as we continue to take the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. If you'd like to write us concerning our program, our address is The Voice of Triumph, P.O. Box 396, Kings Mountain, 28086, USA. On behalf of Pastor Woodard and the entire Family Worship Center team, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.